Hello and welcome back to this new video on Fourier series. So this video is going to be a lot about graphical demonstration. Before we start solving a Fourier series problem, first it is very important to understand what is the graphical representation of a Fourier series, what are we trying to do with it and how are we doing it. So first to get into Fourier series we need to know about periodic functions, specifically the sine and cosine functions. So take a look at this demonstration, then we will head on to Fourier series. Now we are going to observe a very interesting property of periodic functions, especially the sine and cosine functions. We know that sine and cosine are both periodic functions and by periodic I mean that I have taken a sine function and you can see that the same value is going to repeat itself. Suppose for example this value it again repeat itself after 2 pi. So after every 2 pi the same value keeps on repeating. So every value we take on the sine curve after every 2 pi that value keeps on repeating. Now the question is if I compose or if I take a linear combination of this sine function with another sine function or a cosine function with some with any random uh, coefficient and any coefficient of the x term as well so will that still remain periodic that's something we want to observe right over here so let's say i am adding my sine term with half times cosine 2x which you can see and i'm going to plot that and see what is the nature of this curve so right here you can observe that again after a certain period the same value keeps on repeating itself. So you take any particular nature in the uh, any particular point in the graph and after some value of x that value keeps on repeating. So here I have taken sin x plus half time cosine 2x. So I can now take any linear combination whatever you can think of any linear combination of sine and cosine. Let's say I am taking 1 upon uh, 20 okay whatever you might say I'll just take that it's not a problem uh, let me say I'm taking the sine of uh, we can say like 4x right I'm just randomly picking numbers over here so if I just plot that so there's a little change I think because I've taken a too big coefficient let me make it 1 upon 3 and let's check and you can see it's still remaining a periodic function same values are repeating itself after some point of time so if I take a subtraction it still remains periodic if I make in place of sine 4x if I make it 6x it still remains periodic so if I keep on taking such sine and cosine terms with different different uh, coefficients they are still remaining periodic just that that period is changing and nothing else now this is a very important concept in Fourier series because we are going to apply this nature of periodic functions in our Fourier series. Now that we know that when we take linear combinations of sine and cosine terms, it still remains periodic. Now I will implement this concept and I will try to demonstrate how with the help of these uh, linear combinations of sine and cosine terms with suitable coefficients we can generate a square wave function. So let's take a look at this graphical demonstration of Fourier series and then we'll get back in solving a problem. So here we are going to try to make a very nice visual demonstration of the idea of Fourier series. So over here you can see I have taken the square wave form function which you can see in horizontal lines and then the vertical ones which is the square wave form and on top of that we have plotted the sine curve with a coefficient of 4 by pi so you can see the function right over there 4 sine theta upon pi and we have plotted both of them together. Our objective here is to get a function which is a very good approximation of this square wave form that's our objective. So right now this trigonometric function is not a very good approximation as you can see in this image above me. Right. 
So what we are going to do, we are going to increase the number of trigonometric terms in our function, combine them together and try to make an even better approximation. So let's say I have increased the number of terms as you can see right over here with three trigonometric terms sine 5 theta, sine 3 theta and sine theta with suitable choice of coefficients and added them up together. So now you can see that this is very well aligning up with the square wave function right so this is the main idea behind a Fourier series where we are going to take sine terms as well as cosine terms with suitable coefficients and add them up infinitely in a series which will be a very good approximation of some given function and accordingly the coefficients will be chosen and the amplitudes uh, will be chosen okay so right now I'm going to increase a few more terms in my series and try to make an even better approximation. So over here you can see that I have taken a total of six sine terms over here and look at the approximation. It's becoming better as I am increasing the number of sine terms. So here I have not included the cosine terms in my function. I'm only dealing with the sine terms. But in a Fourier series, we have the sine terms as well as the cosine terms. So a series which has only the sine terms, that's called a Fourier sine series. So here actually I'm taking a Fourier sine series and try to create the square wave form. Now this demonstration becomes very beautiful as I'm going to increase the number of terms by a huge margin. Okay, so right now I am working with 21 terms of sine theta with different different coefficients added up together and just see how nicely it is aligning up with the square wave form. So now I'm going to increase this number of terms and now I have taken uh, 36 sine terms over here and just look at the approximation. It's so beautifully aligning up with the square wave form. Imagine if we take 1000, 100,000 number of such trigonometric terms so how well it will get aligned up with any given function and that is all about Fourier series. Now that we have quite a good understanding about how an infinite sum of sine and cosine terms with proper choice of coefficients can generate a given function. Now we are going to try to write the formula for a Fourier series of a function. It is important to note that every function may not have a Fourier series or its Fourier series may not be convergent to the function. There are some sufficient conditions which the function must satisfy. One such sufficient condition is Dirichlet's condition which is not going to be a part of this lecture that we are going to discuss in some other video. So let's get to the formula of Fourier series. If fx is some given function which is uniformly convergent in the interval minus pi to pi, then its corresponding Fourier series is given by a0 by 2 plus uh, summation n 1 to infinity a n cos nx plus b n sin nx. Okay, where n is running from 1 to infinity. Now, these coefficients a0, an and bn, as I told you, these have to be chosen in such a manner that they generate the function. So now coming to a0, that's given by 1 upon pi integration minus pi to pi fx dx. An is given by 1 upon pi integration minus pi to pi fx cos nx dx and bn is given by 1 upon pi minus pi to pi fx sine nx dx. So these coefficients of the sine and cosine terms we need to calculate and then plug in those values right over here and then take the infinite summation of those terms and that is going to converge to the given function 
एफ एक्स प्रोवाइडेड द फंक्शन हैज अ कन्वर्जन फूडियर सीरीज सो नाउ लेट्स ट्राई टू सॉल्व अ प्रॉब्लम यूजिंग फूडियर सीरीज सो लेट्स ट्राई टू सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम वी नीड टू फाइंड आउट द फूडियर सीरीज ऑफ द फंक्शन एफ एक्स इक्वल्स एक्स ऑन द इंटरवल माइनस पाई टू पाई सो वी नो द फॉर्मूला फॉर ए जीरो दैर इज वन अपॉन पाई माइनस पाई टू पाई एफ एक्स डी एक्स द फंक्शन बींग एक्स सो वी आर गोन टू हैव वन अपॉन पाई माइनस पाई टू पाई एक्स डी एक्स राइट नाउ वी नो दैट द फंक्शन एक्स दैट्स एन ऑर्ड फंक्शन राइट नाउ वॉट इज एन ऑर्ड फंक्शन If you don't remember, I'll just quickly recap. If f of minus x is equals to minus of f x, then that's an odd function, right? And what's an even function? If f of minus x is equals f of x, then that's an even function. Okay. So these are the properties of odd function and even function. and these are simple rules of integration that when we are integrating from minus a to a fx dx where fx is an odd function the integral value is zero so over here this is an odd function and we have the integration minus pi to pi so that integration must be zero so we have the value of a zero to be zero okay so let's further proceed with our calculation let's try to find out an the formula being 1 upon pi minus pi to pi fx cos nx dx right that's the formula i've stated so 1 upon pi my function is x minus pi to pi cos nx dx now here it is important to observe that cos is an even function it absorbs the negative sign and x is an odd function the product of a odd function and an even function the entire product that's going to be an odd function right because the cos cosine part is going to absorb the minus sign the x part is going to bring out the minus sign so overall it's going to become an odd function so again integration minus pi to pi odd function integration that's going to be a zero so we are going to have zero which is the value of a n and for all n running from 1 to infinity because a zero has already been found out before so we are going to take n from 1 onwards right now let's concentrate on finding out the value of bn so as i told you the formula for bn was 1 upon pi minus pi to pi fx sin nx dx so that's going to be 1 upon pi minus pi to pi Uh, x sin n x d x. Now this is not an odd function anymore because the x part is odd function, the sin x part that's again an odd function, and the product of an odd function and an even function, sorry, or the product of two odd functions, both x and sin x are odd functions. So the product is going to become an even function. right so the product is going to be an even function that means if i substitute x with minus x the minus is going to get absorbed because both the x part and the sin part is going to bring out the minus sign and together that's going to become positive so that means this function as a whole absorbs the negative sign so we know the property of odd function now what's the property for even function for odd function the integration was zero right now for even function it becomes two times the integration limit from 0 to pi times the function right this was the property of integration of even function from minus a to a we would get two times the limit 
being changed from 0 to a whatever the value of a is and the function itself right so now we need to do a by parts so i'm going into the by parts of this integration so i'll be treating the x part as my u function and the nx part as the v function and i'm going to do a u v by part over here so i'm going to have 2 upon pi i'm going to integrate the sine part and the x part is going to remain as it is so x integration of the cosine part becomes minus of cos nx upon n and the limit being from 0 to pi minus integration 0 to pi uh, so i will have to differentiate the x term the derivative of the x term is y the integration of the sine term so that is going to be a minus of cosine nx upon n so minus and minus it becomes plus i take the n outside the integration and i have simply cos nx dx right so and that ends my second bracket over there and i will further simplify this expression so if i put the limits so i'm going to have pi of minus pi of cos n pi upon m if i put zero so this zero then it's going to become zero if i put the lower limit so i'm not writing that plus one upon n now if i further integrate the cos nx term then that's going to be sine nx upon n limit from zero to pi so we are having now this part if i put pi in place of x that's zero because sine n pi is zero if i put zero in place of x that's again zero because sine zero is zero so this part is becoming completely zero so i'm only having this first part which is uh, the pi would get cancelled and i'll have minus 2 cos n pi upon n now we can write the cosine part as minus 1 to the power n right cos n pi is actually minus 1 to the power n and that is our b n term so we have got our a n term a 0 term and the b n term where a 0 and a n are both zeros and this is the b n term so now i'll just try to write the function so therefore my function which is given by a 0 by 2 summation n 1 to infinity a n cos n x plus b n sin n x i have already shown that this value is 0 this value is 0 and this is the value of b n right so if i just plug in the values i am having summation n equals 1 to infinity I will only have the bn part which is minus 2 upon n minus 1 to the power n sine nx and that's my fx function if i simplify this a little bit more then i'll be having minus 2 outside summation n 1 to infinity minus 1 to the power n upon n sine nx so i just want to write this in the series format rather than keeping it this way so i'll just write the series format of this so minus 2 if i just keep common outside taking the value of n one by one from one and going up till infinity so if i write n equals to one then i'll be having minus one sine x the next term would be uh, plus of minus 1 square that would become plus so sine 2x by 2 then the next term if i take 3 so that's going to be a negative sine 3x by 3 plus so on so if i take this minus inside i'm going to have sine x minus sine 2x by 2 plus sine 3x by 3 plus so on going up till infinity 
so this is my fourier series of the function fx that we were trying to find out so now let's try to see what is the graphical demonstration of this fourier series expansion that we have got so i'll try to plot my fx function which is simply the x function y equals to x function and i will plot this infinite series term i'll not take infinite terms i'll take a lot of terms let's say the first 10 terms and i'll plot them i'll overlap the images and i'll try to see how this function is the rhs function is trying to recreate the actual fx function so let's take a look into that i am going to show you the graphical demonstration of what we have done right now we have got the Fourier series of the function fx equals x and as you can see I have taken fx equals to x which I am highlighting on my screen and I am going to plot the Fourier series of that which I have done and you can see it in the figure just beside me. Now the curve in the orange line or the straight line in orange color that's my fx equals x function and the blue curve the sine wave that you can see that's my Fourier series where I have taken the n value as 1 okay which I am just uh, showing you I have taken the n value right over here so as I am going to slide this slider value of n I'm going to slide the slider and the n value is going to keep on increasing that means I'm going to keep on increasing the number of uh, series terms and I'm going to show how this single sign curve is going to start trying to look like the fx equals to x function. So let's just get into that. So I'm going to increase the value of n as I make the value 2 you can see that now I'm taking two terms of the Fourier series and that's little bit trying to match up with the fx equals to x function. I increase the value of n further, I make it 3, I make it 4, I make it 5. So as I am increasing the value of n, that means I am taking more and more terms of the Fourier series and you can see that it is trying to completely recreate the fx equals to x function. That means the Fourier series is trying to converge to my fx equals to x function in this demonstration. So this is a very nice demonstration as you can see of what we are trying to do with Fourier series. I hope this explanation was helpful to you. Thank you. Have a nice day.